Kitchen. Yeah, thanks. Lovely. Wait, then I'll make one. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank You're you. You're supposed to be answering all the questions, not me. True. <laughs> okay, so it's Jem. Jem Walker, yeah? Yes. Tell us about yourself, Jem. Um, I'm 28. I live in Bursco with my wife, who will be here soon, and my lovely daughter, Maya, who will probably now pull everything out in the kitchen. It'll be fun to watch. Um, I've written my first book and it's been published by Beaten Track because they're awesome. And I'm currently writing the sequel because it is one of a trilogy. Okay, so there's going to, there's going to be three books in, in the series. Yes, yeah? there are, yeah. Okay. There are. Um, Do you have sugar? No, thank you. No Okay, so look, we might as well talk about the books then, seeing as you brought them up. Yes. Um, first of all, tell us about, so the first book is called... The first book is called Knights of the Sun. Yeah. Um, and that's really just an introduction to them, really. They're not, the, the Knights of the Sun aren't in the first book very much. They're definitely in the sequel a lot more. I'm just going to okay. get some more, sorry. Okay, we can have a nose in your fridge while, you, while we're here. That's Nothing amazing. exciting. Oh, hang on, what's that? Which, which? Why have you got nail varnish in your fridge? Ah! Uh, my wife likes to keep it in there. I don't wear nail varnish. I'm terrible. I just bite my nails. But my, my wife has been told by my mother it makes it last longer. And this is actually pretty good that it's, it's dwindled down to sort of six bottles because it used to be on every shelf along here. She had a pretty serious nail varnish fetish. And Maya is done with the fridge now, so should we shut it? Thank you. Thanks, darling. And that's Maya when she was really, really small. When she was teeny tiny. And that's my lovely sister. Do, do you read to her as well? Do I read to Maya? Yeah, just... I try to. Maya, Maya is definitely a bit of a book kid. She's not interested in watching TV or movies at all. She, she just hands you a book and wants you to sit and read a book. But you're halfway through that book and she's up getting the next book because she's bored of that book. Yeah. So we'll go through sort of five or six books a night when it's her story time. Um, one book that she does particularly like, and I remember reading it when I was at school, is um, the, the Jolly Postman. And it actually has little letters that are written to Goldilocks and the Wicked Witch and... Um, who are the other people? The Three Bears got a letter from Goldilocks and Cinderella got a little book delivered to her, but they're actually in... the little letters are actually in there. And she quite likes reading those, but I'm just worried that she'll rip them up as we, as we go along. And she quite likes um, Beatrix Potter. Um, my grandfather gave me the complete collection of Beatrix Potter. I've, I've, I've got about 50 books. And they're all in a little stand that he made me, and they're now in Maya's bedroom. And we read them to Maya, which is quite nice. Huh. So, yeah. I got a little bit off topic there. We were talking about... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's my fault. What did you ask me? And me asking about nail varnish. That, um, oh, sorry. That, and then... that, that kind of got... got did you then ask topic. me what do I read? You said what we, do I Yeah, read? I know. I got off topic. We were talking Sorry. about Knights of the Sun, weren't we? We were. That's okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, where did, you, yes. where did the idea come from initially? For, uh, for Knights? Um, yeah. Originally, it came from my my partner, my wife, Shelley. Yeah. Because she decided she wanted to um, be a paramedic. That was her career of choice. And she was working her way toward that recently. And um, when... She told me that I had this idea about what if paramedics and doctors and nurses and you know fire people and so on were um, angels in disguise and they kind of came down for that one day to help you out with this emergency and then they go home, which is how it originally started. And originally I had one character. The first character was Vale. Um, and when I first started writing it, Vale and her friends were teenagers and they all had a superpower each. But the more their love story, that each of their individual love stories evolved, I realised they're not. It's not old enough. It needs to be quite a little bit older. So, yeah, they then became adults or young adults. So that's, okay. that's where the original. Story so is. we're looking really at a book about superheroes in from the sky that come down to help us. Or is that too simplistic? That's too. That's how the story started. It okay. then became more of. Um, 
that we have guardian angels that come down to help us. Okay. Um, but they're, they're not really guardian angels. They they live in a whole different world, a, a place called Araya, and they have a sun priestess that created them and created their world. And above them, we have the Knights of the Sun. There's, there's four of them. And, sorry, Maya's doing something. She's all right. Uh, and... What was I saying? You were talking about the Knights of the Sun I was. being four of them. There are four Knights of the Sun, yes. And um, you get introduced to them in the first book, but you'll see more of them in the, in okay. the second and definitely in the third. Okay. So, what about the superhero thing? That kind of dwindled away. That, that, that idea came from... Um, Vale's name came because she was going to be able to turn invisible. So that's why her name was Vale. Mm. Um, and I kept the name, but dropped the, dropped the superpower. Name. Okay. Um, and now, even though they're all very strong and they all have their strengths, it's definitely not a, it's not a superpower. Definitely not, no. Okay, do you have a, a favourite character in, um, um, in your book? I think Shy's my favourite. Um, so you hadn't mentioned Shy before, you just okay. mentioned Vale. So tell us about Shy yes, sorry. first. That's alright. Right. Um, vale, vale was the first character, but then a lot of other characters came after her. Like Shy, um, it's... A very strong, very loyal, very fierce protector of, of his world and his friends, and he has a love interest, and her name is Dusk. And then there, we have Kin, who we also think is one of my favourites. Kin is kind of this, compared to his friends, he's kind of plain, he's, he's not as brave, he's not as big, he's not as strong, and he doubts himself constantly. Um, but he kind of evolves through the book, and definitely in the second book, Kin kind of comes into his own. But Shy has this um, this terrible thing happens to him. I can't tell you what it is, obviously, because I want you to read the book. But something terrible happens to him, and that impacts hugely on who he is as a guardian, as a man, and as a character. And the second book, Shy definitely has a there's a lot of darkness going on. And I think that's given him a um, an element that you wouldn't have expected would work, but hopefully the way I've done it, it does work because I think he's he's very interesting in the second book. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if you had to choose one line in your book that mm -hmm. you're really proud of writing, what do you think that would be? I think that would be... Um, as long as it doesn't give any anything away that's... No, that's I'm trying to think of a way to put it so that it doesn't give anything away, but... I don't think it's the particular line, I think it's the impact I wanted the line to have. And that's, um, Vale is having a, a nightmare, she's in kind of a dream sequence, and Volgar visits her in her nightmare. And it's very scary, you'll have to read it, but it's quite a scary nightmare. And um, he leads her to believe that there's a, there's a battle going on and that they've won the battle. And Vale has no idea what's been going on, but she doesn't like what he said. So after he says, we've won, she just, there's, this, there's this pause where she looks at him and she just says, we'll see. She, she doesn't know what's going to happen, but that's her initial gut, well, I'm not going to let you, sort of thing. So, so your like favourite line is, we'll see. We'll see. Yes. That's really awesome. Is it? <laughs> I like, yeah. You mentioned dreams in yes. the, and, and whatever there. Do you, do you have any kind of recurring dreams or, or nightmares if it's not too traumatic to tell us about that? Sure. No, um, I had a, a recurring dream a lot when I was a teenager. It's going to sound absolutely absurd. I used to have a recurring dream that I was, drawing, I was driving Kit, the talking car from Knight Rider, but I only had one arm, so I couldn't change gear. And I couldn't get away from whoever was chasing me. Okay. And I would have that dream several times a week. I would have thought Kit would have been able to change gear. I would have yeah. thought so, yeah. Um, okay. he, was, he was yelling at me to change gear, and I couldn't do anything about it. Um, no, no other frequent dreams from that one. I do, on the rare occasion, suffer with night terrors, and they're not very nice. Because you okay. scream out in your sleep and that sort of thing. Um, but I always have Shelly next to me and she makes me feel better, so that's okay. Do you think any of that has actually influenced your, your has influenced the book in any way? The, I'd like to, uh, Vale has, um, in the book, she has kind of premonition type dreams and type nightmares. 
in a way that she's getting a clue, she gets little clues in her dreams as to what's going on. That, that doesn't happen to me. But when I do have a dream, and you kind of very, I think everyone knows this, when you're really stuck in a dream and it's that vivid, you just want it to end, and you're telling yourself to wake up and you can't wake up, that happens, that happens to Vale. It's very, she has a, she has a gut feeling something's kind of going wrong, but she can't, she doesn't know the full story and she can't stop it. So I think it definitely played on when I wrote about Vale's nightmares, yeah. Okay. I think so. So who, who play Vale in the, the Hollywood movie of um, Nights ah, of the Sun? Um, I think someone like Ellen Page would make a good Vale. She's kind of got, um, if you imagine, because Vale has purple hair, I kind of imagine Ellen Page with, with purple hair and looking like she's ready to kick some ass. I think that fits rather well. And she kind of has this, which is what Vale has, Vale has this uh, appearance of vulnerability and like a silly girl with a crush kind of kind of concept, but she's actually extremely strong and and, and she has a, a great strength and power about her that I don't think you expect until bad things start happening. And I could see Ellen Page playing that very well. And I think I'd have um, you've not asked. But no, go on. Right I was now. going to, so <laughs> you may as well carry on. I very much like um, Chris uh, Chris Hemsworth. I think he'd make a good shy. Um, Shy's got kind of long hair and um, stubble, and even though he has just this face of someone who's who's good and who's honest, there's definitely an undercurrent of, of anger about Shy. Um, and Kin, I thought I've forgotten his name. That sucks. It's like a a man who looks like a boy. I've forgotten his name. Um, can you remember? I told you. I have no idea what you're saying. You have no idea what I'm going to say? You're rubbish. Thanks. It's alright. Anyway. Considering I inspired the whole book, yes. I'm proud to say you're rubbish. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, would you mind. I mean, have you got a specific place in your house where you, where you write? I do indeed. Would you mind showing us where no, that is? No, I don't mind at all. Okay. Okay. Lead the way. Don't forget your. Okay, I won't. Tea. Burn <laughs> my glasses. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. We're going upstairs. It used to be, it's moved around a lot, my writing space. It used to be where Shelley is sat now, and then it was in the playroom where Maya is, but that room just became Maya's space. So my writing space is now in here. Spare bedroom stroke, Gemma's writing space. And here it is. I'll sit down. And I had, a, I had a, a very big computer, but Shelley's brother has kindly let me use his um, MacBook Pro laptop, and it's working very well. Yeah. Um, my sister bought me a thesaurus for Christmas when I hadn't been writing the book very long. I mean, the book took me seven years to write. I think she bought me that the second Christmas, so two years into writing the book. And I always use this. I never, ever go online to find a word. I always use the thesaurus that Melanie got me. Okay, you say it took, so it took seven years to write that first book? Yeah, which is surprising when you see it, because it's not very big. <laughs> Have you got a copy here? I do, sorry, it's in our um, bedroom. That's okay. your, that's your fetch. There it is. See? It's not very big. It's not very big at all. It's only 204 pages. That's not... That seems like a lot more when you're writing it. Mm. <laughs> but uh, we're going to assume that it's not going to take you seven years to write the next one. No. <laughs> Have you I, got a, a time scale? Sort yeah. Of? Um, my publisher, Debbie, who's awesome, um, said she'd like the second book to be released around the same time this one was. So it'll be December this year. So I have until sort of late October, early November to finish writing it. Okay. Yes. Which That's is fine. Um, can you just hold it up again? I was just having a look, quick look at the cover there. Um, oh yeah. yeah. Where did that Where did that come from? I have a very very talented friend. Her name is Karina Gamble Campbell Gedge. Karina Campbell Gedge. She's a graphic designer in Norwich. And she's one of the best people ever. And she read my book, Lights of the Sun, as I was editing it, and your um, Debbie was editing it. And she came up with this front cover, and she even tinted this feather here purple because Vale has purple hair and purple feathers. 
and it's just brilliant. I'm chuffed. To, I'm chuffed to bits with it. I can't wait to see what she does with the the second. Oh, she's doing the second book. cover yeah, as well. Is she going to? She's going to do all three. Is she's she? going to do all three. Yeah, definitely. And she's a huge, huge fan of the book. I think when she got it, she read it in a couple of days. Okay. So, do you have a like a regular time that, that you write every day, every week, every couple of days, or, or uh, whatever? Yes, I try very, very hard to get up at four or five o'clock every morning, and I write a couple of hours before I go to work because I work full time seven days a week, which is why. It took me so long to write the first one because I was right. I was working and I was doing uni. I was at uni, so that's why it took so long. So I try very hard to get up very early in the morning and I'll write for a couple of hours and then I have a day set, which is today. So when you guys have gone, I'll be writing. Um, my lovely wife takes our lovely baby out or does something with her to keep her occupied and then I stay up here and, and write for a few hours, which I really, really enjoy. Okay, and that's, as you say, with your Mac, with just Mac. just in word. Just in words, yeah. do, do, you have, do you set a, a like a, a word limit on how many words you have to get done? Or? I can't do that. I've tried, um, but that just feels like I'm making it a chore, and writing is not a chore to me at all. It's something I wish I could do full time. So I just see how I go. There are some days where I'll be honest, I can't write more than a page, but I'm really happy with that page, so I don't feel I have to do any more. There's other pa other days where I'll write ten pages. But I'll have to go back and edit them because I've just banged out ideas, sort of thing. Um, but very soon I'll start sending them to Debbie and she can start editing them properly for me. Fabulous. That's so, if you could, just changing the subject a little, if you yeah. could have written any book that's mm -hmm. ever been written that you've read, mm -hmm. what would that be? I mean, it's a little bit different to what's your favourite book. It is, that. I see what you mean. I think I would have loved to have written. Um, we need to talk about Kevin. I think that's one of the smartest books I've ever read. It is written by a man in the form of a diary written by a woman who was a mother and a wife and just these little hints of, of her son who's just going in a in a terrible way. I don't know if you've read it. It's, it's amazing. It's a phenomenal book. And a, a film was made of it with Tilda Swinton. Um, but I remember reading that book, I've read it three times, and just thinking, how, how clever, clever is this book, is this man, to have written this book so well? So, I wish I'd written that book. It's okay, so thanks. It's okay. Um, is there anything else you want to... Um, if, I'm, I'm assuming that writing the second book in the series is all you're working on now, or have you got any other anything else going on in the pipeline? That, that At the moment, that's the only one I'm writing. I do, however, I've started having ideas... Um, that I've jotted down a lot of, but I'm trying not to get too into that one because I'm very much into this one, of a, a more adult book with um, sort of mystical drug dealers and things like that going on. Um, so I'll write that when I finish these three. But right now, these three are my main, fo main focus. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much for your time, Jim. Thank you very much for coming around. Cheers. <laughs>